fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Pioneers who first settled the western United States faced danger and sudden death at the hands of hostile Indians and outlaws. The safety of their lives and property depended on their ability to shoot straight. And years later, when the masked rider of the plains had brought law and order to the new territory, these old-timers still felt a greater confidence in gun law than in any other kind. If it had not been for the Lone Ranger, they might never have realized that force and justice cannot exist side by side. The winning of the West might never have been accomplished. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the hill country! Come on, Silver! Away! <laughs> Rancher stood by while the Lone Ranger and Tonto watered their great stallions at the spring behind the rancher's home. And... Yep, stranger, me and Abby pioneered this country. No offense meant to your part there, but we come here when engines were so thick in the east parts you never knew if you was going to keep your top hair from one day to the next. <laughs> yes, sirree, them was stern days. You should be proud, then. I'm glad I'm living where I am and when I am. <laughs> Stranger, you're looking at a fella you don't see very often. A man that's happy and contented. I've got out of life most everything I ever wanted. Almost everything? <laughs> Almost. There's still one thing I want. And someday, when I got the cash and time to spare, I'll get that, too. What is it? Look up yonder towards that hill. I see it. Well, just beyond is the sweetest little valley you ever laid eyes on. You won't find its beat anywhere. It was made for a man to build his home in. And one of these days, I'm going to. I know the place. And I can understand how you feel. Uh-huh. That house is going to be all of logs took right from the woods around. It's going to be small enough for me and Abby to finish our days there in comfort. But all the same, it's going to be big enough so as we can have our children around whenever they get the notion to come and visit us. <laughs> well, I got it all planned. I hope someday you have the home you want. Tonto and I have been here before, and I've always wondered why you chose this place to build. On account of the past. Oh? Like I said, we pioneered this part of the country. Sometimes didn't see other folks for months at a time. And the past being the only way through the hill there, what folks did come this way came through it. Being downright hungry for company, we built close by. I see. But now that the country's built up a little, it's different. You spoke of needing money for the home you want. You ever thought of prospecting those hills behind you for gold? I've run across signs of ore in there several times. Have you told anyone else that? No. Why? That's something I never want to get out. I don't understand. You don't? Well, I'll tell you why. 
If the word ever got around, there'd be a rush in here like you've never seen before. Yes, that's likely. Gold. Everybody's thirsting for gold. And what is it? Just some yellow stuff that you can't neither eat nor drink. It ain't good for a thing in itself except that folks put a price on it. That's true. It ain't gold that makes a country rich. It's land. Without the land, you could have gold till your eyes bulged out. You'd starve to death. You ever seen where prospectors have been? Many times. Ever hear of them settling down and staying after the gold was gone? No, sir. Grab the gold and get. Run to where there's more gold. That's them. The blazes with homes and towns and what happens to the country afterwards. Fill your pockets and the devil take the hindmost. The prospectors aren't good homemakers, and that much is certain. Well, I've known about that gold, and I won't touch a speck of it. What's more, there'll be no pack of greedy idiots raising hob around here as long as I'm able to pack a gun. I'll blast the first one to try it. Sun go down. Better we ride. You're right, Tanta. Here, old fellow. Dan, I was so interested in what you had to say that I forgot the time. We'll be leaving you, but thanks for the water. And I hope we'll see you again. Uh, drop by any time, stranger. Everybody's welcome here. Masked men or lawmen or just plain folks. It don't make no difference. Adios. Good day to you. Come, Tanta. Uh, get him up, Scout. Come on, old fellow. Tanta, we're not riding on to the border. What matter? We're making camp beyond the pass. Why do that? You've heard what Dan said of prospectors? Uh-huh. I happen to know that fellow we met in the hills was one. Oh. They could hardly miss finding pay dirt. The hills are rich with it. Missed discovery so far only because a few settlers don't understand or It's the same in California before Sutter made his strike. That's right. And that prospector says nothing. When he leaves, everything will be well. But uh-huh. if he talks... There will be trouble? More trouble, I'm afraid, than Dan can handle. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come on. The prospector mentioned by the Lone Ranger spent little time in the hills because what he saw there sent him racing eastward. It was many miles to the nearest settlement, but a week later... Drinks for the house are on me. Gold, fellas. I found gold you wouldn't believe. Clem. Clem. He said them hills are just bulging with gold. What hills? You know, the, the pyramids. You go through the pass and by Dan Bowen's place and there you are. Going. You just bet I'm going. Ain't everybody else? Get up there, boy. Come on. Word of the strike spread with the swiftness of a prairie fire. Another week went by, and then at noon one day, Dan Bowen was startled into dropping the tin cup of coffee he held when his son burst into the house, slamming the door behind him. Oh, blast it. There, look what you made me do. Oh, don't get mad at the boy, Dan. You ought to be used to the way Jim slams around Banapo. Well, it's got to stop. I'm sorry, Pa, but I got news. It better be good. That was the last of the coffee. Well, it ain't good. It's bad. Well, tell it. The word of the gold's got out. Huh? It's so far. This fellow's heading this way from all over. Just talked to some of the first to get here. I'm out the other side of the pass and rode as fast as I could to tell you. The mask man. Huh? He done this. He knew about that gold. And I was fool enough to think he wouldn't tell. Doggone if I wasn't fool enough to take a liking to the fella. Oh, why? Get you... my belt and gun. But... Don't pester me with questions now, Linda. Just get my gun. Sure, Paul. And get my rifle, too. Dan, you're going to make trouble. You can bet I am. You get your hardware, too, Jim. You'll come with me. Right. No, Dan, you can't. Stop and think. You don't know what might come of this. That's where you're wrong. But... I do know what'll come of it. Trouble. Uh-huh. Trouble for the skunks that think they can come around here and raise Ned. Oh, yeah, uh, thanks. Oh, uh, Dan, after yeah. these, there'll come more. And even if you turn the first ones back, you can't hope to fight them all off. Uh, don't, don't fight them. Just try to make the best of it. Coming, Jim. I'll be all right with you. Uh, that's old fine and cartridges. Come on, let's go. Uh, you get to my horse for oh, me. All right, sure. Dan, now wait. Well? Where, where are you going? Uh, to the pass, of course. Where do you suppose? Let a thousand of them come. It cuts them right down to my size. Hi, Jim. Get a move on. Four 
men were in the first group to approach the pass that served as an entrance to the valley and the gold-bearing hills beyond. Each man, mounted upon a horse, led a mule that carried the prospector's tools and supplies. The man known as Hard Rock seemed to be their leader and... Change far now, boys. There's the pass. You had to stay in the saddle for a bit after dark. We can spread our blankets in the hills. Sure, let's push on. Suits me fine. Say, Hard Rock, why don't we stop and rest our horses at this fellow Bowen's? Save him from getting too fagged. Yeah, good idea. Acquainted with him? Nope. Those that are say he's a right fine fella. Yeah, I've heard the same. Hey, right, get along there, pesky mule. <laughs> Don't get riled with him, Sam. Just think of all the dust he'll be able to pack for you going back. In place of the grub and such he's carrying now. <laughs> what do you figure I've been thinking about? <laughs> Here's where we enter the pass, boys. Uh-huh. Right narrow, ain't it? Yeah, ain't so very long, no. You can see on beyond there where it widens out again. Well, we'll... Say, who's that? Huh? That a couple of horsemen ahead there? Can't see him so good because he reined up in the shadows. I see him. Well, act like they're waiting for us. Maybe a couple of the boys that beat us here. Hi there. Pull up, Jim. Who are you? Move there, move Oh, there. Move oh, there. Oh, oh, there. Oh, oh. Keep him covered, Jim. Sure. Hey, what's the idea here? You've come as far as you're gonna. What's that? I reckon you heard me. You must be loco, fella. Was this some kind of a holdup? Ain't a holdup. What I said, I meant. You ain't said who you are. I'm Dan Bowen. This is my boy, Jim. And I'll sure let you have it if you try coming closer, Jim. Bowen, I don't get this. You're prospectors. Well, sure. But prospectors ain't exactly the same as outlaws. What's biting you anyway? You can turn around and head back for where you come from. Well, now look here, mister. I'll tell you what, Hard Rock. It's the gold. He's got a notion nobody's got a right to get at it but him. That so, mister? No. Well, if it is, you'd better think things over some. First place, you ain't got no right to try hogging everything for yourself. The second place, there ain't no need of it. Not to be gold enough in them hills for everybody. You couldn't hope to prospect the whole layout all alone in a thousand years. I'm not interested in the gold. <laughs> I'll just bet you. I've known about it since before Jim here was born. I've never touched it. I'm never gonna. And neither are you. You just think we ain't. Stand aside, boy. There's something here I don't savvy. Bowen, you really meant that when you said you'd known about the gold? I did. And you've honestly never helped yourself to any, huh? I haven't. Well, that's beyond me. Ain't a reason in the world I can think of why a fellow wouldn't want gold. <laughs> that's your business, I guess. I'm interested in finding out why you say we can't go after it either. That's my home beyond the pass. I found it and fought to hold it. I've earned the right to keep that home the way I want it. Free of the roughnecks and cutthroats and worthless gold-hunting scavengers that'll be trampling in here if I let them. So that's it. I've got fields planted. I've got stock range in the valley and the hills. I won't have them fields turned to mud and my cows stole to furnish beef for thieving prospectors. Don't call us thieves, you crazy fool, are you? Easy there, fella. What he said... No, no, just take it easy. Bo and you've got the wrong slant on us. There'll be a rush here, sure enough. In any crowd, you'll always find some roughnecks. Take us by and large, and <laughs> we ain't so bad. You ain't got cause to fear us. You said it true, I ain't. We just... Now turn we... yourselves around. Time's passed for talk. Well, look, Bowen, there must be some way we can get together on this. Maybe Jim. we could... Jim. Yeah, Paul? If they don't bamboose, fire over their heads. If that don't persuade them, fire again where it'll hurt. Back up, fellas. Pull that trigger, kid, and see what happens to you. If you're set in a fight, Bowen, you'll get your stomach full of it. Uh, that's your warning. The next will come closer. Why, blast your mangy high Let's house. take him. Get back. Get slapping the leather. Yeah. Time to break it up. Hey, oh, it's oh, 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 a mess, oh, man, Paul. He's a skunk told about the gold. Then we you're the back. cause of this, blast you. Well, take it. Oh, you ask for it. Time to disarm these fellows. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The masked man picked up the guns he had shot from the hands of Dan Bowen and his son. Tonto, meanwhile, had forced the prospectors to turn over their arms. We'll keep these for the present. You'll get them back when we have your promise. There'll be no trouble. What's your license to buddy and mister? These 45s are my authority. Care to question it? Uh, well, uh... <laughs> nope, I reckon I don't. They look plumb convincing. Good. I tried to drill you and missed. I suppose you'll make us pay. But I ain't big enough. I'll tell you to your face, I wish I'd got you. You believe Tonto and I mentioned the gold we'd seen in the hills. I know you did. You're wrong. We've been camped within ten miles of here since that day we talked. I don't believe it. Well, well we won't argue. Just turn your mounts back and get home. You can't That's tell... for you as well as your father, Jim. I don't have... Son, to... don't argue with a masked man when you ain't armed. We'll get. These fellows will have to go through the pass. But we ain't done with them yet. They won't go through. Huh? This quarrel is between you and them. In spite of what you think, Tonto and I are not taking sides. We stepped in to prevent bloodshed. We have no intention of aiding one side or the other. They'll have to turn back also. Quiet. You've all had your orders. Now on your way. Stranger, I can't figure you out. Why should you? Oh, I don't know. Just hate to be puzzled, I guess. (laughs) Well, come on, boys. Might as well go back and make camp. We can always get through another day. Well, Come right. on there, back. <laughs> All right, boy, get up there. Get, get up there. Get up there. Dan, I'm sorry you think I've done this to you, but I won't attempt to justify myself. Perhaps you'll be convinced of the truth later. Now, go on home. You're a smooth talker, stranger. But me, I think you're lying in your teeth. Come on, Jim. Get on, fella. Get up there. Get up there. Them heap mad. I knew there'd be trouble. You stop them. Stopped it? Tell her this was nothing. What you mean? We prevented a fight between Dan and four prospectors. Uh Uh-huh. But Dan's still as determined as ever to hold this pass. Not right. And for each of the prospectors here today, there'll be a hundred before the week is out. No, Kimasabe, the real trouble hasn't begun. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Hail, Silver! Away! What the Lone Ranger forecast became true. By evening, a dozen prospectors had reached the pass. The next day, their number tripled. At the end of four days, the eastern approach to the pass was one large camp resembling that of a small army. In the meantime, Dan Bowen and his son guarded the pass in alternate watches. It was so narrow that it could easily be defended by a single man. And Dan was stubbornly determined to resist the prospectors in spite of the protests of his wife. Here, Dan. I've heated your water. You can wash up. Thanks. Where's the soap? Right there. Oh. Oh, you look so tired, Dan. Huh? You look as though you ain't rested in a week. Huh? You can't keep this up. You just can't. Aren't you listening, Dan? I heard you. Where's the towel? Here. Uh. Oh, Dan, please, won't you even talk about it? What's it say? You won't stop it? No. When you know you can't win out, when you know sooner or later they'll be fighting and they'll break through and you or Jim will get hurt. If a man's in the right, he don't stop fighting just because he might get licked, does he? Oh, don't talk like that. Don't our home mean nothing to you? It's not worth your life or Jim's. Don't worry about us. Oh, how can I help it? We've gone through times just as bad before. When there was need of it. But Dan can't just see our home isn't really in danger. It isn't. Huh? Don't you savvy what it'd look like around here if I let them roughnecks through? I know, Well, but... then, what you talking about? But I was thinking of our valley, where we've always planned to build. That'll still be there. It won't even be touched. What's it to us what happens here? It ain't as though we weren't never going to move. Now, you're talking foolish. But don't you... You see... think we can pull stakes here just any day we please? I didn't say that. You know but... we can't. Well, do you figure me and Jim can clear the land in there and put up the place we want and still look after the work we have to do? It'll take help. Help costs cash. And we ain't got it to spare. Oh, I knew it wouldn't be any use. No, Pappy. As long as this is where we have to live, I'm going to keep it the kind of place where I'll want to live. And nobody will stop me. Now, now where's my hat? Oh, here. Oh, Dan, you forgot your breakfast. I uh, can't eat now, honey. Jim's waiting. But you can't then go you can without... Let me something cold at noon. <laughs> But the gold seekers beyond the pass felt that they had reached the limit of their patience. A meeting was called, and nearly everyone demanded action. Choosing Hard Rock as their leader, 
They decided to attack the Bowens just before dawn. Tonto listened on the outskirts of their camp and then reported to the Lone Ranger. Oh, boat scout, oh, fella. Oh, oh, fella, what is it? Fellas, fight. What? Them go through pass. Now? Not now. Them go before sun come up. That means Dan's refused to give in. Huh? I'd hoped he would when he saw the odds he faced. Here, Silver. What we do? I'm going after Hard Rock. He's the leader of those fellows. Uh-huh. There's one way left to settle this, and we'll have to use it. Wait for me here, Tonto. Tonto, do it. Come on, Silver. Come on! The meeting of the gold seekers had been late in the day. Night fell soon after, and the men, knowing that the time for sleep would be short, took to their blankets early. Soon, most of them were deep in slumber, hard rock among them. But less than half an hour later, he was awakened by a light touch on the shoulder. He looked up, saw a masked man, opened his mouth to shout, but was stopped by a hand that threatened to smother him. Quiet. Quiet, do you hear me? You're not going to be hurt. When I take my hand away, keep your voice down. There. <coughs> you, you're the fellow we met in the pass. Right. What do you want? You and I are going to have a talk, but we can't talk here. Huh? Come with me. Say, look you here You have now. my word, you won't be harmed. I hope you'll come willingly, but if you won't... What? There's my horse, and here's my guns. One shout, and I'll have you out of here before a man could stir. You won the first time we met up, stranger. Yes. And I reckon you win again. Come on. <laughs> Hard Rock rode with the Lone Ranger to his camp. The masked man outlined his plan, and then... Ranger, I'd give every dollar I own to know your name. You would? Why? No outlaw would ever think of a scheme like that. <laughs> no outlaw? I don't know anybody that would. Well, what have you decided? Well, I'm fur, of course. Fine. But this means I'll have to hustle to get back to camp. Tonto will take you, his saddle scout. Yes, scout. I'll see you again, won't I? You will. I sure hope so. I don't mind saying knowing you has made me doggone proud. Ready, Tonto? Uh, let's travel. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Dan Bowen, unaware that an attack had been planned for the early morning, did not realize that the Lone Ranger was responsible for it being called off. In fact, news that reached him several days later made him more angry than ever with the masked man. Did he, Ginger? You really saw it, Linda? You ain't just making this up? I wouldn't story about it, Paul. Just now got back. The pole cats. What can we do? Not a doggone thing. But, Paul, what, what could Jim and me do again all them fellas out in the open? Besides, we don't dare leave the pass. But how could they have found out about the valley, Paul? Got it from the masked man. But how would he know? I told him, blast it. I reckon I'm just a born idiot. I stood right over there by the spring and told him the whole works. How there weren't a better spot to build in this part of the country. How we'd always hope to make our home there. Now they're spoiling it. For spite. To get even. I've heard of some low, mean, ornery stunts, but this one tops them all. Days passed. Then, one night, while Dan was standing guard. It's getting cold, man. And cold as blazes. Maybe I... Who's there? Speak up or I shoot. Who's there? Drop that gun. What? Drop it. By thunder, this time you don't... Oh, my hand. You don't seem to learn, Dan. Uh, what are you going to do? There are quite a few men beyond the pass, Dan. You will really... let them through. Wait. So tonight I'm putting you into their hands. <laughs> When dawn came and young Jim Bowen went to relieve his father, he found him gone. His mother and sister were frantic when he returned to the house with the news. I knew it. I knew it. I knew one of these days he'd be killed. What have they done with him? I don't know. You've got to find him, Jim. You've got to. I'll find him and I'll do more. If Pa's been harmed, I'll get every skunk that had a hand in it. You, oh, Ma, what is it? Look, there, through the window. Huh? Why, why Pa, it's Pa alive. But those men Them prospectors, him. they got him. And they're coming here. I'll fix them. Let Paul go. Let him go, you skunks. Or by thunder, I'll let fly. Jim, Jim, be careful. Let me take my back in the house. I won't go. I won't. Then stand aside. Have they harmed you, Pa? You idiot. Put down them guns. I ain't a scared. I'll show them. Hey, don't shoot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're covered. 
Tell your pards if I ain't let loose, you're going to get drilled. Oh, blast it all. Didn't I tell you to put them guns down? But, Paul, These they... gents are my friends. Huh? Pa Paul, you, you're talking like you're out of your head. <laughs> out of my head, am I? Abby, fetch out everything we got for Vittles. Jim, you open them three barrels of cider we stored away. Linda, go pretty yourself. We're going to have a party. Dan, please, you're not yourself. What's that? Don't talk so wild. For gosh sakes, Dan, you ain't told him yet. Oh, doggone, I plumb forgot. Told what, Paul? About the house, huh? The new house. <laughs> sure, we got a new house. There in the valley where we always planned on. Built of logs like we wanted it. Snuggest little house a fella ever had. Oh, my stars. Abby, just wait till you see it. You and me never hope for anything even half so fine. But gosh, who... Uh, how, uh, oh, doggone it. If you ain't clean local, Pa, where'd it come from? Who built it? How These did... fellas built it. Linda, that's what you seen the other day when you thought they was just tearing up the valley for spite. They was making the clearing. But I thought they was fighting you. The mask man changed all that, miss. The mask man? Uh-huh. If it hadn't been for him, I reckon there would have been a fight. Instead of that, he told us how Dan had always wanted a house in that valley he showed us. Well, there was plenty of us to dig in and help, so throwing it together weren't no chore at all. <laughs> We're all going to help you move, too. Great, <laughs> yeah. And for all of me, they can prospect them hills till the cows come home. Thanks to the mask, man. Oh, it's wonderful. Hard rock. Yeah. I'm still again prospecting, and don't you think I'm not? Uh, well, you know a heap about it, don't you? Well, ought to. Well, I was just wondering. Huh? <laughs> If you'd be willing to take me along. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.